So here we're looking at Integrated Pest Management, which is abbreviated IPM. This is a great kind of summary here where this involves this integration of identifying and monitoring uh, for casual agents, evaluating uh, based on those monitors of what's going on, trying to prevent some of the pest problems from occurring, taking action uh, when needed, and then monitoring uh, the end result to see if any part of this needs to be uh, repeated again. IPM tools, uh, alter surroundings, you can disrupt insect behaviors. Keep in mind that using pesticide is still a part of integrated pest management. This doesn't mean that's null and void. But we try to use other things that may be less impactful on the environment as part of this integration of managing of pests. Now, IPM involves the use of this combination of methods to control pests that results in minimizing environmental impacts overall. Now, chemical is used, but we're looking at prevention being kind of the foundation. Then cultural sanitation, physical, mechanical, biological controls, and then chemical is kind of like a last resort there. Now, this can be applied to buildings and homes. This can be applied to the farms and also manage natural systems. So this incorporation of data to then gain information and knowledge and applying it to learning is a vital, important component of this integrated pest management. Now, what the guidelines are for IPM is select, um, selected to control, which will cause the least amount of impact on pest and natural enemies. The goal here is to get the same end result we want, but not really impacting the environment in other ways that we may not see as great as some other uh, chosen um, methods that might be employed. The controls um, used will have the least potential harm to the environment overall. So while we may want to control one, for example, insect pest, we want to make sure the rest of the environment is as minimally impacted as possible. We call these guidelines, just as we see here, we see on uh, TV shows, because this gives you just the general idea of what to expect. And they can be specifically managed for different pests we're trying to control. Now, the usage of IPM involves using a wide range of pest control strategies, making decisions that requires good information. There's many different possibilities, but the goal is to try to have that proper diagnosis. Um, that identification step is very important because it can allow for specifically targeted uh, ideas or strategies. The plant and pest characteristics are important considerations as well to allow those to be as specific as possible. Uh, the goal is to encourage the plant growth while disrupting plant growth in a reproduction to kind of get the end result we want with minimal impacts on the environment. Lastly, the benefits of IPM is to pr promote sustainable agriculture, reduce pesticide use overall, and less the, ch the chance of pesticide resistance. What that means is here we have, before pesticide application, we have this first generation, we have a spray control. After pesticide application, we see that um, many of the insects were killed, but there's always a few that remain. The next generation, we see an increase in the same number. So we take that same pesticide, we apply it. Well, for whatever reason, these red bugs have resistance, and we can see that we're building or encouraging that population, essentially artificially selecting for that population. Um, this is using just one straight chemical. If we're using this integrated pest management, the goal is to try to reduce this from occurring. Reduce the potential environmental contamination of a pesticide, uh, reduce the residues on plants, and also lessen the chance of insects developing uh, this resistance uh, to a particular product so that we're managing them in an effective way while still maximizing plant growth.